Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Wednesday, October 10th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. If Twitter ends up running its own video service, this should help. The messaging service has bought Vine, a video sharing startup. Also, Twitter's co-founder Jack Dorsey is rumored to have less responsibilities. Are either of these good moves for Twitter? Joining us with breaking analysis on these stories is SiliconANGLE News Desk editor Kristen Nicole. Welcome, Kristen. Good morning. So to start off, uh, first, can you tell us what is Vine? Um, it's a startup. It hasn't quite launched to, to the public, but it basically centers around a video service that works with your mobile phone, and it lets you take short um, video recordings like the Twitter for video. So we've heard about other video startups before. What is Vine doing that makes it unique from other video apps out on the market? Sure, there's been plenty of folks trying to do something similar for a few years now, and uh, what Vine does differently is they take uh, small segments, little clips, and kind of stitch them all together instead of taking one continuous clip or even taking photos and turning it into a video from there. Who are some of Vine's competitors, or who would Vine be able to stand out on its own against if Twitter hadn't purchased them? Uh, there's others like uh, Viddy is one, Tout is another. Over the years, there have been some that have uh, come and gone or been acquired. I think there was one called 12 Seconds, which really iterates what their their service was really trying to do, accomplish. Um, even Seismic started out with a very video-centric approach to um, short burst social networking updates. And as we all know, uh, Seismic evolved quite a bit from there and ended up being acquired by Hootsuite. Do we know why Twitter is interested in Vine over the other video sharing sites out there? Uh, one reason may be because it's a smaller startup um, with a relatively small team. It might have been available at a good price. Uh, there was some speculation that this was an acquire, meaning that they really wanted the development team and the founding team behind the product more so than the product itself. But there's also uh, information coming out that Twitter may in fact be using the, the underlying technology to either roll out a video service, video hosting for their own purposes, or just go ahead and launch Vine as a standalone service. Yeah, so there's a possibility that Vine could still live as a standalone service. What exactly does that mean? It means that it would still be Vine. It would have its own URL. It would have its own uh, user base, essentially, and it could still work in tandem with what Twitter's doing. Um, they have a lot of partners now where they do uh, video hosting. Of course, Twitter doesn't have video hosting for themselves. You can't upload a video directly to Twitter. You have to go through a third party. Um, so it may be something similar to that where they're kind of buying their own partners, or it could be something similar to what we've seen with, with Facebook and Instagram. Instagram is still called Instagram, but it's kind of under the Facebook umbrella. So how is a video service like Vine going to help Twitter evolve? Well, the hosting aspect of it is really interesting here. Uh, Twitter's moved into the space for photos, and video is a natural next step. Um, so if they do launch it as its own uh, standalone service, then it could continue to evolve in that direction. If they want to incorporate it for video hosting, that's going to be a, a really good next step for them as they try to improve the user experience with some of the media specific aspects for sharing. You mentioned earlier that the company has yet to launch publicly and that perhaps uh, Twitter is interested because price might be low at this point. Is there any other reason why we may think Twitter is investing in a company that is not publicly launched? Well, there could be other reasons that they're just not revealing at this time. Um, it looks like with some of the, the founding team members, there's um, some networking that may be of importance in that regard. You don't always know these things. In a related story, Twitter co-founder and CEO of Square, Jack Dorsey, has been in the headlines. Uh, he's been highly admired and even referred to as this year's entrepreneurial golden boy. Uh, but earlier this year, a business insider hinted that Dorsey was spending less time at Twitter. Can we speculate about his absence at all? There's certainly been some speculation about what's going on with uh, Jack Dorsey. Um, some say that his leadership at Twitter has kind of faltered and he's remaining there. 
for, you know, to still have an influence in product design, but maybe not so much as a leadership role. But then also he has um, Square, the mobile credit card dongle, and that seems to be going really well. So uh, there seems to be lots of speculation about his involvement with Twitter. Of course, he was one of the early founders, and there was some drama when he left and, and returned. Uh, but he, he definitely seems to have a lot on his plate right now. Nick Bilton of the New York Times wrote, Mr. Dorsey's role has since been reduced after employees complained that he was difficult to work with and repeatedly changed his mind about product directions. He no longer has anyone directly reporting to him, although he is still involved in strategic decisions. So what can we make of all of that? It really sounds like he's um, shifting into a figurehead role where his ideas on and product design may still be helpful and influential. I know that Costello made an effort to bring Dorsey back into the fold um, and really have that, that team to be uh, part of the face of Twitter. And it doesn't hurt to have a golden boy on your team, even if he's not necessarily uh, doing a whole lot in meetings. Uh, but really having that influence, especially with the early ideas and possibly some of the business aspects and goals of of where Twitter started, I'm sure it doesn't help to it doesn't hurt to have him around. Recent leaks have hinted that Twitter revenue for forecasts are rosy and ahead of product ahead of projections. Is that something that's unexpected? I wouldn't necessarily say it's unexpected. Uh, Twitter's been around for a little while now. They've had an ad platform for a couple of years, and it seems to be going pretty well. Expectations earlier this year put uh, Twitter's revenue estimates estimates at around 260 million. So uh, that's still small compared to companies like Google, maybe even Facebook, but it's it's good for Twitter, especially as they continue to flesh out and, and seek that balance for a business model. Nick Bilton of the New York Times also mentioned that Twitter insiders have an IPO goal of 2014. At this point, is Twitter IPO more of a fantasy than a reality? There's no telling what the, the team is looking to do, but the the, there's certainly some reports from pundits uh, saying that a Twitter IPO may not be in the cards right now. The market may be a little bit tired of the consumer-facing web-based products like Facebook and, and some of the others that have gone public in the past year or so. So it would definitely be a huge consideration for Twitter to even think about going public in, in the near future. Well, Kristen, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. Take care. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.